For those of you who thought this project had been forgotten, I have news for you in the form of two bags of components which arrived today. And um, this is why this project uh, has taken a while. As I said earlier, I want to actually do a complete revamp of this amp and uh, especially the amp section. Um, and I wanted the right components. So instead of using what I had on hand, I ordered everything and uh, true to form, it took a few weeks to get here. I always find it quite amusing when some of the American uh, channels that I watch uh, complain about how long it takes for components to arrive. Uh, in their case, we're talking about two, three days. In my case, we're talking about two, three weeks. So when you're living in an island in the sun, you have to learn some patience. Right, so I think I have everything and uh, time to start. I'm going to be doing a full recap, especially on the amp section. Um, I'm also going to replace the resistors. In actual fact, I think I'll probably be redoing the entire amp section, both left and right. Uh, there are a few electrolytics there. There are quite a few uh, film caps. Some of those resistors are out of spec. Uh, these resistors never had much of a reputation for keeping their value. Um, I'll check some of them and make sure. What I'm going to do, just so that I don't piss off the true purists, I'm going to keep all the components separately and labeled so that at any time, if I want to take this back to the original form, I can do so. And I think it's worth doing that for a radio of this caliber. What I'm going to do is, um, what I've decided on is the a lot of the uh, caps that they use here, the film caps, are pretty much the same value. They 0.01 microfarads, so 10 nanofarads. And uh, I did quite a bit of thinking as to what uh, brand to use. And I decided on these Wimmer, Wimmer capacitors, the MK, uh, this is the MKP10 which uh, have a very good reputation for coupling and uh, in, in audio in general. Now, bearing in mind this is not a total 21st century hi-fi amp, I'm not going to go absolutely crazy on it with uh, some of those uh, real audio grade capacitors. I made a, an experiment on that board, as you can see. And I did notice a difference, but I haven't changed the caps at all. This is the job that awaits me. I'll be starting on that board. Um, I'm changing the uh, cathode bypass capacitor to something bigger to improve some of the bass response. And I'll be doing this in phases and testing it one stage at a time, just to ensure that I don't mess anything up on the way. It tends to happen sometimes. And I'll keep reporting as we go along. So, better get started. This left and right ampli amplifier board um, is pretty well documented. Uh, you can look at the schematic and then they've actually got a layout of the board. It's one of these old PC boards and you can see that in terms of connections you've got a few there that come to the board that go off to the pot and the tone controls and then you've got the output going to the output transformer and you can actually see that quite clearly on the board. So I see I'm going to have to desolder some of those connectors up there. There's another one lower down which is that blue one over there and another one down below. I'll document that carefully, desolder it and then there are four screws that take this whole board out. There are two further connectors on the top of the board that are the, the heater supplies. So as long as I document it properly with photographs, I shouldn't have any problem getting it back in place. So at the bottom of the board we see some connections over here. That one there goes off to the output transformer. That connector there goes off to, I believe that's a feedback. That one there goes to the output transformer. So we have one, two, three connectors that go off to the board. That there is a capacitor that stays on the board. 
So down at the bottom we should see three connectors. And there they are. There's the blue one at the bottom. That one comes within that blue sleeving to the bottom there. That one comes out of the blue sleeving as well. Goes to that connector and then goes off. And then we have the red wire that connects to that point over there. Okay, so that's those three. Let's get rid of them. Just a quick correction. That uh, middle blue one does not come within the sleeving. The sleeving is the red and the blue that connects to the top and the bottom. The middle one that has one going through comes from the uh, bulk of the radio. So I have to be careful I don't mistake that when I connect it back again. Up here we see another one that goes to the output transformer. So that one needs to be removed. That is that guy over there. And we see it on the board as well. There it is, that yellow one. In the blue sleeving you've got the black going through around the board and you've got the yellow one that uh, connects to that point over there. And then at the top here we have one, two, three connectors, and they're all um, audio, so they have shielding as well, which we will see in a minute. So there's one, two, three. Let's have a look at the board. And there we have the three connectors, all of them with sleeving that goes to a common ground over there. So there's that little white one there that comes from across this way. It connects to that bottom point. There's another one coming out of this green sleeve the negative goes to there and it goes to the middle point and then there's this other white one here that goes to the top point forms a triangle there this one goes off to the volume control and as we can see from the top we have two wires that come onto the board all the others stay there um, these two wires over here these are heaters and there they are there's a whitish sort of a um, creamish one that goes to the right and a brown one on the left. So these have to be desoldered from below and pulled out and then the board is done. Then it's just a question of unscrewing these bolts and the other two on the other side and we should be ready to take the board off from below. So here we have the board and um, it's pretty neatly laid out. Taking into account the age of this thing, a little bit of dust. Um, I'll be checking all the resistors, comparing them to the values on the schematic and checking how they fare in terms of value. These electrolytics will be changed as well. Um, the one that is the, this one I believe is the uh, cathode bypass cap. I'm going to increase from 50 microfarad to significantly higher. Um, so that uh, we get a uh, tighter base and, uh, and it behaves better in the, in the low frequency range. Uh, the limit really is uh, in terms of minimum, not maximum. I'm going to put in 100 or 220 microfarads in there. I'll have to put it in a similar position to this one because otherwise it won't fit into the space that this comes into. I have to be very careful. This is another cap that's under the, that lid. So if I don't uh, position it properly, it won't close. Um, other than that, a good clean up. Check all the solder connections. Make sure everything is kosher. And clean up the board. There's a lot of resin and gunge over there. for been there for years, I'm sure. I'll also be checking as I said, I'm, I'm changing all the components, literally all the components on this board. I think with the exception of this resistor, I did test it and it was fine. Um, and the two are very well matched from left and right. This is the cathode uh, resistor on the ELL80. So it's a bias resistor that's biasing the output uh, push-pull tube. And I believe that's perfectly fine, 200 ohms, and they both match. So I'll probably leave that one alone. Um, but I am changing everything, but I'm going to then just test the leakage on these. I'm not sure what these uh, brawn caps were like uh, for leakage. 
so I'll be checking this for leakage and uh, and value to see how they've held up. Um, they may well have held up very well. I'm not sure. So uh, I'm going to store, keep and store all the components in little packages separately so I can, if anybody ever wants to put this into its original state for whatever reason, some museum maybe, they can do so. Um, for my needs, I want this to be as close to hi-fi as possible. I want uh, as little distortion as possible. So I want it for the amplifier uh, more than for the antique value. It's a pity you can't do that to humans. This radio is the same age as me and I can't just go in there and change all my components for new ones. But with this radio, I can give it the benefit of uh, some of the modern technology. Um, obviously, the objective is to keep this fairly original, keep it uh, in, in uh, pretty good condition. Um, but I think one has to draw lines to where one stops uh, improving the quality for the sake of the visual aspect. I prefer the quality, obviously without messing up the visual completely. So I'm going to be working on this board. We'll put it back and see what we get. So here we have it. That board has been wiped, shampooed, cleaned, scrubbed, combed, you name it. Completely redone. Every single component, with the exception of the tubes and the cathode uh, resistor of the power tube, is new. And what I've done there is I've uh, put in good quality components and I've also made sure that uh, when necessary they were matched not only within that stage itself like the um, the resistors that um, the two resistors on the phase inverter that need to be matched to get a symmetrical but inverted waveform very carefully matched but also between one channel and the other this is the right channel and exactly the same thing was done. The board was thoroughly cleaned. It was full of uh, old debris and um, flux that had stuck on there. It was actually quite filthy. And now it is in perfect visual and working condition. Right, so power amp done. And I'll show you the results. And here's the damage. As you can see, all these components have come from the right channel. Here's the equivalent for the left channel. And um, what I've done is I've actually measured all of them. And I was pretty surprised because when you look at this, we've got two electrolytics. That's these guys here. This is the filter cap. It's supposed to be four microfarads at uh, 350 volts. I measured 5.2 microfarads and it's got 70 microamps of leakage. So that's the first one. This is the cathode bypass cap. Um, 100 microfarads, 15 volts. It measures 120, so that one's drifted up a bit. 15 microamps leakage. And now the first surprise is with these guys. All the film caps um, the green ones are 125 volt rated and the brown ones or gold ones are 400 volt rated they're all 10 nanofarads and um, look what they measure 10.4 10.04 9.8 9 9.81 10.06 10.01 i mean these things are closer to spec than modern caps so I figured, okay, they must be all leaking. But look at that. Absolutely zero measurable leakage at the rated voltage. And this is with a 50 microamp uh, meter. So this thing, these caps are as good as new. So it's a good thing I decided to keep them. And uh, that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to be stored in the respective little packet. The same happened, same occurs for the resistors. 
they, with two exceptions, um, I believe the 1.8 meg is at 1.97, and the other, the 1 meg is 1.964, so that's drifted up. Um, these guys are pretty much on spec. You've got 1K measuring 1.002K, you've got 27K measuring 28.7, that 1.5 has gone to 1.6, 100k 98.9. So these are all within a very, very tight tolerance. So they did not drift as I'd expected. I usually find these things are up to 50% to 100% above the rated value. In this case, it's the exact opposite. They are very, very close to the rated value. So these guys really did use some pretty good quality components in their day. And... Um, these can in fact be put back into the boards. They are being kept separate and labeled and measured. This little piece of paper will go in the plastic bag as well. And uh, who knows, you can always put, the, put them back and restore it to what it was before. These are the uh, results of the uh, component uh, changes on the two power amp stages. I'm going to be doing some measurements with uh, putting a signal in and measuring the response. I want to check how well matched the two, the left and the right uh, channels are. And I also want to check what the frequency response is for the amp um, to ensure that we, we do have a flat frequency response, at least in the audible range, to make sure we've got no high frequency oscillations. But that'll come in the next video. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed that. See you soon.